And we are live. Welcome, gentlemen, to another Rule Zero. Uh, today, we are discussing the vexed topic of emotionalism versus stoicism, particularly in regard to game, but not exclusively, because I think it's fair to say that emotionalism has been in, well, it's been on display recently in terms of current events and politics and so on. Um, and obviously, this applies to all areas of life. So um, originally, I was thinking about talking about this in terms of dating and in terms of game, because being ice cold, being in control of your emotions, being a guy who is stoical in, in those in that sense is frankly the best way to operate in terms of getting girls, being successful in the dating market. But nevertheless, uh, it also has application across all of these different areas as well. So hopefully we'll be getting into that later on. But I'm joined by two renowned panelists, Mr. Ryan Tomasi, the, <laughs> yes, the, the, post, the, the poster boy for stoicism. <laughs> the, poster boy, the poster boy for stoicism and the uh, unself-proclaimed godfather of the manosphere. So we're honoured to have him uh, here today. And also Mr. Ryan Stone. And I think uh, John is going to be along later and possibly Rich as well. So, but... It's just us three for the moment. How are you, gentlemen? Rollo, how are you doing? Good, good, good. I had a really good show on Wednesday in spite of having my original stream pulled. Uh, a lot of people were asking about that. I uh, I was going to do a topic on... Um, on uh, actually, Of course, it was a little bit clickbaity. I, I will admit uh, it, <laughs> the title was uh, Can Women Love Men? And that's really all it said. It was just a question. It wasn't even that like, yeah, I don't even think it was that like triggering. But uh, about 20 minutes before I was about to go live, um, I had some, uh, what, Sam or Rugby hit me up and said, uh, your, your stream has been pulled. And I'm like, what stream? What could have, <laughs> what <laughs> was offensive? Like, and then so I looked at my inbox and I found that YouTube had sent me this notice that says, we have, uh, we've, uh, pulled your stream or basically we've removed your video. We removed your video because it violates our terms of service or our our user agreement or whatever. Well, uh, so, so you got censored before you'd even gone on air. I'm like, uh, I, I, if they they do that, I'm just <laughs> okay, back off. And just, I deleted it and everything. But like, I thought it was interesting because this is, the, I, and maybe people can correct me on this if they know any better, but um, this is the first time, at least I've experienced this, that a stream was killed before it went live. So they were saying your video is offensive and triggering and we're pulling it off. And I'm like, there's you haven't even done anything yet. What video? <laughs> there is no video. What what if you'd have just said, what if the whole stream was gonna be can women love men? And you'd have just said, yes they can. Do you know yeah. what I mean? How did they know? And How would, did they know that you weren't gonna say that? And that's I I was very measured in what I was talking about. I didn't have yeah. But for whatever reason, um, you know, either some, it, I think what happened was this, is that there's something in the description or something in my tags that is now triggering the YouTube algorithm. Did you say that you, <laughs> obviously, obviously a, a, a certain Mr. Molyneux was, um, mm -hmm. uh, was, was been this week uh, as, as well. Was there some reference there? I, uh, well, I, I have used Molyneux in my tags before, my, my standard tag set, because I have been on his show like a long time ago. Mm. And, you know, it's a it's a good search term. So I'm thinking that might have had something to do with it because he got erased mm. uh, about a week ago. And he's also yeah. erased from Twitter. And I think he, I don't know if he has a blog or whatever, whether that's been erased as well, but he has been essentially disappeared digitally speaking, except for like, I think he's on the app or something like that. Yeah. Right? Oh, did yeah. you see that well, new I report from uh, YouTube, why they removed him or not YouTube Twitter? Uh, I saw that you'd sent it, but I couldn't read the tweet for some reason. Yeah, What's the he's story? essentially making his own sock puppet accounts. Like, He's making a bunch of fake teenage girl accounts so his audience doesn't look like just a bunch of lonely, thirsty men. Yeah. And that was their thing. They said it was abusing the uh, the platform making sock puppets. There's a I don't know if I buy that or if it's just convenient, but like he knows he's on the radar. So you better be flying like a straight arrow. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I think it's funny is like, and I saw that too. It wasn't like back in 2016. He got, he got caught for like, trying to post as if he's like some teenage girl or some kind of like a song. Oh yeah. With his, he forgot to change his account. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, it's always quite funny when that kind of thing happens, but like you said, Ryan, is it just an excuse 
because they're kind of going to yeah. say that, are Probably. they? I mean, they, you know, they perhaps were looking for a reason to get rid of him and they looking for violation. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that's the thing. Military, yeah. we had that a bunch of guys, like they'll get off of some charge and you know, if you get off on a charge, you'd embarrass your chain of command and they were looking for any reason to get you. So you don't cross the line. He should have known better. Like it's not yeah. fair, but it's also, that's how it works. <laughs> So yeah. I have very little sympathy for him, although I don't like the idea he was removed from the platform. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, and again, I mean, maybe this is a lead into the topic, actually, because, I mean, I don't like the guy. I don't like what he's got to say, et cetera, et cetera. Nevertheless, um, it, this is just another indication that, or this is just another example of this whole woke culture, this whole yeah, cancel culture that we're seeing across the board. And, you know, while some of his views are pretty reprehensible in, in my view um yeah. you know it, it does then beg the question well where does it end who's next you know um exactly. and um you know and that's and that's the problem and, and in the end if you support freedom of speech you've kind of got to support freedom of speech for everybody right not just Perfect. you know mm -hmm. um but I, I guess what we're kind of seeing is emotionalism isn't it really it's mm -hmm. this emotional response and we've seen that in response to covid We've obviously seen it in response to Trump. We're going to see a lot more of it, I would imagine, as we things hot up for the election. Um, I mean, are, are guys just getting? Obviously, we're talking about men uh, specifically here because that's what the streams aimed at. So, I mean, are guys becoming more emotional than they were before? And is this affecting their success in life in terms of dating, but anything else? I would say. Start with this one, Rolo, because I got a good one when you're done. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll fly this one out there. I've done actually a couple of shows on this, and I, I picked up on the um, sort of age of emotion, or what I call age of ego right now, yeah. uh, about maybe a month ago when all the riots started. And I, I kind of, I don't want to say I, predict, I predicted all of this. I talked about this <laughs> a little bit back when COVID was a thing. And I kept throwing this out there on Twitter and I kept saying, you know, this is this is going to lead to something else. You don't put 40 million people out of work and not have yeah. civil unrest. Yeah. And uh, and I also also made allusions to uh, allusions to the uh, American spring. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I got that tweet out there back in, like, I think the end of March or the or early April. And I said, we're, we're in for an American spring. And people were, you know, throwing rocks at me and saying, oh, you know, you, you're just, you're a reactionary. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I, well, if you go and you look at the, um, if you look at the history, it wants the history, the, the background. If you rewind the tape a little bit and you go back to the Arab Spring, which I believe was 2013, I, I could be wrong, but it's when all the uh, the uprisings and stuff happened in like Tunisia and Libya and Egypt, and you had the Muslim Brotherhood and you had them overthrowing governments and there was there's riots in the streets and and the the common I think denominator of all of that is that you have a large number of unemployed young men 18 to 24 18 to 29 something like that uh no prospects for jobs uh and in those particular cultures the only way you're going to get laid legitimately is by having a wife and the only way you get a wife is by <laughs> having a job and having all those things and so it's you've got all of this sort of disaffected population of young people and it's very similar in what's going on in the United States right now. And right. we can argue and debate all day long as to whether or not this is a, um, you know, this is some sort of plan or it's, a, you know, the, the lizard people behind the scenes, yeah. something like that. But the fact of the matter is that's pretty much when people when we've talked about the lost boys generation over and over again and mm. why, why do they why do they look remember this show that we did ryan remember the one where we were talking about uh, who's my daddy and yeah. we were talking about uh, jordan peterson and 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 guys uh, you know purposeless lost boys generation of guys <laughs> looking for the sheep looking for a, a shepherd and so 2.0 <laughs> yeah and you've got this, this generation of kids and not just not just you i'm i'm primarily talking about young men but mm. could be women you know girls as well as well as as we see out in the streets right now um who have been taught over the course of at least the last two or three generations that emotion is everything that emotionalism is where it should out, out, outrank or should uh out prioritize 
reason and rationality. And we're seeing that happen right now. And I think what's funny is I'm looking at uh, tweets from like uh, what Claire Lehman from uh, Quillette, or I'm looking at uh, tweets from uh, was uh, Steve, Dr. Steven Pinker. They're trying to erase Dr. Steven Pinker at his, um, at his university for shit that he said back in like 2009, or they're still pissed off at him because of stuff he said in the, uh, the blank slate. And yeah. so I have to go back and say, didn't you say this back then? That was ne- now everything you said in the blank slate back in what, 1998 when you wrote it, like all of that stuff, uh, we're, we're offended by that and you should be erased and you should be, you should be yeah. and really but that, you- that energy or that, impetus that influence is coming from a generation who think who prioritize emotionalism before rationality before stoicism before any kind of critical thinking enters into the thought process it's all about how do i feel how can i express my emotions and the more i do the better a person i am because we're all living in the age of ego and age of yeah exactly and it's this feeling that if i feel like something should be changed or should be a certain way then it, it should therefore happen de facto without mm-hmm. any sort of like logical debate or any kind of intellectual consideration. John has joined us. You are philandering. It looks like we've got some, some bizarrely, looks like we've got some bizarrely clashing animal print um, shirts going on today. Jeez, man. I should have, I don't even think I own an animal for a shirt. You have that duck hunter gear. You're good to go. I do. I guess. <laughs> but out here, the leap brought up your point too, Rolo. So, like, let's just say it's not a completely irrational thing. I get it. We've seen the charts where, like, the boomer wealth versus how, like, they've gained wealth over their age. And then you watch the Gen Xers are about doing half as well. And the millennials are doing half as well again. So the angst, I get. There's, like, an actual, like, Thomas Barnett, awesome geostrategist, talked about Arab Spring. He made it very succinct. And it's exactly what you said you're seeing here. Um the general life script of human beings is to become productive, have a family, you know, get laid, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. When that no longer seems like a reasonable option, well, then the reasonable thing to do is just, you know what, if this system's not working for me, screw it. Guys only have one power, the power of violence, like from a national standpoint, you can't, guys can't nag your way to success or the MRA would actually be a thing still. Victim your way to success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of this is stemming from that. Now, having said that, they given like you've gotten your various political factions that are trying to make these changes because of general desperation and lack of guidance, no life script for them. And part of it too is signaling. So a lot of guys are like, okay, so I see girls at this event. I have a chance of getting laid if I just woke harder than the wokest woke ever <laughs> woke. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't work that way either. So what do we never, what do we, you can so? never be woke. You can never be woke enough, though, can you? I saw what a tweet the other day. Troy, what are we what are we angry about this week? Everything, exactly. everything. No, we're we're talking we're talking about emotionalism versus uh, stoicism, and actually, we can kind of like we're talking about it in a sort of political context now, but we can sort of bring it into game a little bit, if you like, because oh. the the reason that this sort of came about in the first place was I did a few tweets this week, which actually resonated quite well, saying things like. You know, the most successful guy in terms of game, in terms of the dating marketplace, is the guy who's ice cold. It's the guy who's got ice running through his veins instead of blood. Um, is that something that you can speak to? Because I think that's possibly an apt description for the for the Grand Commander. Well, I mean, <laughs> first of all, it's High Commander. How dare you? Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. Troy, I was shopping today and I thought about you. Uh, Thanks, man. Guy, Troy. Thanks, man. This is- guys, I've been off the air for the last two weeks, uh, just really focusing on the guys that are in body language mastery. Troy Francis has been in e- almost every single session, and uh, it's been awesome. So it's thank been really you so good, much, Troy. It's been fantastic. No Honestly, I I love it. Like we can sit here and, and and jerk off who's most alpha at the end of the day, but there's guys that are just like needing help, and I love the fact that all of us. Rolo had the record-breaking attendance, over 200 people on the live Zoom attending. Um, <laughs> Troy Troy did a speech yesterday, Rolo, and some guy asked a question. He's like, when's Rolo coming back in the middle yeah, of Troy's yeah, yeah, speech? Yeah. It was like, it was like, question, it was like, it, it was like question two. It was like question two. I just finished the whole speech. People were like, yeah, yeah, great. And then so, right, first question. He's like, yeah, uh, when's Rolo coming on? When's like, Rolo okay, coming fine. back? When are we losing this British guy? Where's Rolo? So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, are, you, um, are you doing it tonight? No, week weekends you know, are off. We're, not, we, okay. we, we're we're Monday to Friday. The webinars. I'll um, get it on Monday. Yeah, we're gonna go until the end of July. So um, bonus for the all the guys who attended. So it's gonna be fantastic. We're we're doing a watch party 
for UFC tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, going back to that, with with letting your – okay, let me tell you a story about this guy named Jerry the Dishwasher. He's told me this back in the day. He's like, listen, you want to go out there, young man? You want to go play with those girls and have a bunch of sex? That's fine. He's like, but leave your heart at home. He's like, those girls don't 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 get wrapped up in, you know, hoeing. Like, don't get emotionally wrapped up in girls that are who've made a a, a career out of hoeing. Whatever they're gonna hoe, they're gonna hoe. But yeah. those aren't the good girls to fall uh, into a relationship with. There are women you have fun with, and then there are women that you have a relationship with. Now, in regards to the <clears throat> um, the stoicism. All these people, all these dorks, because that's what they are, who are like, oh, I'm just stoic, bro. Like, you know, yeah. my, my my wife tells me to do the dishes and I just like look at her in the face and then, you know, she realizes how, how alpha I am. And like, you know, this is all imagination played in his head. The reality is this. If you want to be good with dating and you want to be good with seduction, you have to be a man that arouses mm -hmm. a variety of emotions out of woman. If you're not doing that, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you going to do with your time? Jerk off in your living room? I mean, seriously. But also <laughs> as well, if you are led by emotions in the dating environment, the likelihood is you're going to fucked over because it's mm -hmm. pretty ruthless out there. Um, women obviously have all of these options. As we know, they're not afraid to exercise those options. If you are somebody who's like, oh my God, and the classic is the sort of, the, what they used to call the AFC, the average frustrated chump who pulls a girl finally and then falls in love with her and like, oh my God, she's so amazing. And that guy is gonna get ruthlessly fucked over. Whereas the dude who is emotionless, the dude who's stoical, who doesn't, basically it's that, that I don't give a fuck attitude, isn't it? I, that I-D-G-A-F uh, attitude, right? It's that guy um, is gonna get all of the attention and I think, that this has only become more pronounced, you know, as we've gone on, right? I think it's like even more the case these days that the more cold you are, the more pimp that you are, mm -hmm. um, the better you're going to do out there. I think there's a, um, I think there's kind of t extremes on either end. Like you'll get guys who are like the, I'm, I'm stoic. I, I'm just going to go over here and do my thing. I, I think stoicism really appeals to sort of this MGTOW. Uh, passive guys basically mindset. yes yes and and it the seems pussies like of the and, well, i mean it seems like wisdom right it seems like well marcus aurelius said this or senate yeah. said that you know like they'll go back to like sort of the the great minds of antiquity right to to bear to, to justify why they're why it is that they've decided to drop out but then it sounds like wisdom and it's hard to i mean i'm not get it you know stoicism you know if that's i think a lot of guys probably need to rediscover or something about stoicism i'm not because most guys today like i was just saying a minute ago is like for at least for the last two or three generations have been taught emotionalism as a priority because of their sort of gynocentric upbringing or their education in you know by women for women and raised as defective girls yeah, we've got a, we've got generations of, of young men who who are basically you know life wise they're rudderless and the reason is is because their fathers taught them the same thing right which is oh you need to get in touch with your feelings and and we've systematically really since the sexual revolution turn uh, you know turned men like we call it pussification right or or he's a mangina or right? I mean, there's all kinds of different euphemisms that what they are all you know relating to what the, they're what they're all defined by is this concerted effort to feminize generations of men and how do you do that well you turn them into women i had a uh, a post i I'll, I'll put it up here and I'll, I'll give it to you in a second here but i had this post that some uh, it was a picture that somebody sent me on instagram and it was we need to normalize uh, men crying or boys crying. We need to normalize <laughs> men becoming more feminine. We need to normalize men expressing their emotions. And it was like kind of like this infographic. I'll, I'll put it up here for you in just a second. Yeah. So yeah. I was talking about this, and I was like, I was, I put it out as a tweet, and I'm like, this is, this is the gender war, basically. This is where we're going. Like, this is what, what we've been teaching young men for a long time. This over dependency on emotionalism to the point where men young men being competitive because we're still merit based and we're still dominance hierarchy based we take that and we go oh so emotionalism is the game great i'm going to be the best damn emoter that there is and i'm going to prove to everybody that i'm the highest form of emotional 
you know, weesh guy that I can possibly be. And that'll get me laid. That'll solve my reproductive problem. And so, you know, men in their sort of deductive competitive nature, they take that. And they, they won with it. Well, I'm yeah. going to be the most soy. I'm, I'm going to be the most soy in the whole fucking Twitter I'm going to soy you. you no, know? I'm going to out-soy <laughs> me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to be the best I'm going to be a professional athlete in emotionalism. I'm going to out-soy Pat Stedman. I'm going to fucking do it. Um, girls could see, make yeah. guys more emotive in a heartbeat. All they have to do is mm-hmm. sleep with guys who have the trait. And I guarantee you, you, sell, you tell guys that wearing a dress is hot and you sleep with a guy, guys will be wearing dresses like it's mash. Yeah. Guaranteed, but they don't, and that's the problem. Is they're Ryan, listening to you, the fake signals. Ryan, interesting thing I've always found about you and hi, Rich. Good to good to see you, man. I'm blurry for some Hello. reason. I got some. Um, yeah. Ryan, interesting thing I've always felt about you is that you seem to be pretty stoical naturally, or or, or let's say pretty. Uh, give less fucks. You, you give. Less, you don't really give a fuck. It seems to be kind of natural to you. Is that the case, or is it something that you had to develop? I'd say I'd say learned, but learned early. Like I didn't have the best childhood growing up. Like for example, here's some here's some like really sad stuff that I'll giggle about, and you'd be like, "Dude, what's wrong with you?" So my <laughs> stepdad, my called me like my nickname was her, was my mom's little bastard until I was like 18. <laughs> so like, wow, it's really hard for me to what have some girl household. saying, "Yeah, dude, he's <laughs> he was literally one of those you're not a man until you fight your old man types." Mm-hmm. Which kudos to him. Like it didn't it didn't screw me up. That's the problem is I can mention this stuff and I kind of think it's hilarious, but everybody else looks at me like I just strangled a puppy. Yeah, yeah. not giving. Yeah. And that's the thing. So it, it didn't give me any halcyon world image of dads are supposed to love your kids and take them to the park and tuck them in at night. It's like, no, he put food on the table and he definitely was not source of validation. And between that yeah. and like the military, like there was never, I never had the opportunity to be coddled. And so caring about this emotion stuff just never became a factor for me. I don't know if it's genetic, yeah. but it was definitely, it was definitely na- like nurture. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same well, time, like guys who get screwed over there, you eventually learn once you get screwed over, like married guys are the worst for this. When their wife turns on them, she goes feral. And then their entire social network turns on them and goes feral. Yeah. Guys kind of learn how fleeting things are. And it's really hard to care too much afterwards. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you're quite fortunate in many ways that you've you've got that aspect, and that was ingrained early. Because a lot of guys, you know, their, their main problem it, when it comes down to it is they are sort of like too emotional, they're too invested yeah. in emotions, and then that yeah, they them too over. much. <laughs> yeah. So, Rich, um, welcome to the show. So, you obviously very successful guy. You know, um, built businesses, very affluent, and you know, successful in terms of your relationship life now and everything despite the what happened in the past i mean you always seem to me to be very level-headed and kind of somebody who is merit you know rights intellectual sort of um cerebral inquiry over the emotions i mean can you talk us about talk to us about your experience with this stuff and has being unemotional sort of contributed to your success you know um Somebody said to me once, uh, if you can't control your emotions, you'll never be successful in life. Yeah. And I didn't really knew, know what that meant at the time I heard it. Um, I was probably late 20s, or early 30s, but it took like once it sunk in and you realize that you that you can't have a knee jerk reaction to a lot of things that that trigger a lot of people like today, people get triggered by a lot of stuff. Right. You see it all over social media all the time. There's an outrage mob that like swarms in and tries to go and destroy you if they don't like something that you've said or you've done. Um, but you got to have a level head in life, right? I mean, not only yeah. do you do you have to take a little bit of time to respond to some of the crazy that's out there, but when you do respond, you have to do it in a level headed way, and that applies to everything, you know, in business and, and friendships and partnerships with women, all kinds of <clears> stuff. I mean, stoicism is a great practice, I believe. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Uh, John, I mean, you are a, obviously a dirtbag, an internationally renowned <laughs> dirtbag. Um, with a puppy, you, don't forget that. With, yeah. a, with a puppy. Um, and you seem you seem a pretty level-headed sort of dude who's not who doesn't allow emotion to kind of <laughs> to kind of get in the way of things. Apart from since you got this puppy, um, <laughs> when you're when you're out pimping it, right? Um, how much does not being somebody you know, tied to their emotions benefit you? You know, you just like, 
I see a lot of people getting out of shape for this whole uh, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith thing yeah. going on right now. Yeah. What happened and here? I, I'm gonna, I, I'll be talking about it tomorrow on tomorrow's uh, show. So I think a part of it is like guys just put too much value in what women think about them. Mm. And guys just put too much value in like – I think Rich, we talked about this. But like guys are just like just huge pussies. Like they just like – they're like – Guys nowadays are like what women were like in the 1970s. Women were like, I want relationships. I want to settle down. And then now yeah. it's all these dudes talking like that. And the girl's like, I want a career and blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> just like whatever she's yeah, yeah, going to yeah. say to whatever the, you know, her overlords on The View or Oprah or Dr. Phil said to her. So, I mean, you have to just look at the world for what it is. The West, Western civilization is collapsing. We're in the midst of it. But, like, if you don't like it, leave. Like, it, it's also the greatest time to be alive. Like, if you can really yeah. hone down your internet skills or your, your programming skills, in 18 months, you could be making $100,000 a year. You could do that with welding. You could do that with the trades. Everybody talk about, like, oh, you know, all these dorks talking about, like, oh, AI is coming to take my job. AI is coming to take my job. Dude, America is in dire need of people in the trades too. So yeah. nowadays it's the time to like, just forget about all the people trying to pull you into their emotional traps because it's a black hole. <clears throat> and these people are, you're never going to make them happy. You, you cancel Stefan Molyneux. Now they want Jordan Peterson canceled. Now they want PewDiePie canceled. Now they want everybody canceled. You're never going to fucking satiate the mob. So understand the mob. Avoid the mob, get rich, and then laugh at the mob all the way to the fucking grave. That's just that's my life philosophy. I don't get yeah. I don't get involved with the nonsense. I do what I want to do. Nobody's gonna tell me what I want to do otherwise. And I have, I'm resourceful enough as a man to make what I want to happen come to, to fruition. And then that's just how I go about living my life personally. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Did you and Troy like coordinate your jackets today or something? We did. <laughs> we just talked about it. Because I think my grandmother's got like the exact same <laughs> jacket. I got to go over her and find it, man. Your, your grandma doesn't have it because we robbed her ass and yeah. took it. That's, we cut we, it in half uh, and made these shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's this, is the new, this is the new hot dude uniform. That's yeah. right. It's Rod. like Chairman Mao. It's like, um, you know, uh, I, I tend over. To I think uh, what I see right now is is this over dependence on emotionalism, primarily as a result of sort of this, I don't say systematic or, but it's it's been this social push to make well certainly make men more emotional, um, and to normalize those things. I I put that uh, that video or that uh, that that picture up there for you, but. Uh, I can remember back in like this, well, gosh, even back in the 80s when I was growing up, uh, it was always, you need to get in touch with your feminine side. You need to, uh, you know, get in, get in touch with your emotions if you're a guy. Like that was supposed to be how you could sort of set yourself apart uh, from the from the crowd as being sort of a more developed, more, more, more evolved like human being if you became yeah. more than, like a woman. Now in 2020, it's we need to normalize, literally it is we need to normalize men being feminine. So it's no longer, oh, there's, you have this feminine side and you have this masculine side and you really need to explore your feminine side a little bit more. Now it's you need to be a woman. That's but you, what yeah. it is. But your, your sense is that, that is, this is actually a deliberate... I think it, I, strategy. Well, if it is, I think it's uh, it's deliberate, but it's deliberate as the result of empowering women that we with you know well hormonal birth control, and then where we've come yeah. since the sexual revolution, and putting women into positions of either political power or into uh, the American workplace. Uh, if, yeah, you know, if you want to follow the MGTOW you know rabbit hole, then it's uh, you know repeal of the nineteenth. You know, we gave them votes and all that other stuff. The, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't. It doesn't matter how we got here. We're here. LOL. So what, what yeah. do you, so, so what yeah. do you do about that? And I think what I've seen really, at least since the middle of this last decade, so from like about 2015 on, has been this. It's either been I'm going to go with the woke mob and I'm going to be as emotional as I possibly can, or else it's these guys who go <laughs> the other way. And I think really the last decade has been defined by binary extremes. And you will see that any time you put any kind of topic out there, if you if, whether it's red pill or it's political or whatever it is, anytime you put a, a topic out there, if you go and you say, 
you, you make some sort of uh, assertion, the first thing that your critics are going to say is, well, so you're Hitler then, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> you, so you're this bot, you're this. Ab- uh, remember when, uh, what was the, the, the interview, the lady who interviewed, uh, Jordan Peterson on the BBC and she's like so oh, what Newman? you're saying is that right there is exactly what I'm talking about and that defines this generation is binary extremes there's no critical thinking they've never been taught critical thinking they've only ta- thought uh, mm-hmm. talked about what do I feel okay well if you're saying this and I disagree with it then that means that you actually agree with the binary opposite. No, yeah. we have, there are varying shades and varying degrees of you know understanding these things. So, like when I talk about like stoicism versus emotionalism, I'm not saying you should be, oh, you should be the most emotional. You know, wear your emotions on your sleeve, like you know, be the sensitive soul in your safe places and all this other crap. And on the opposite side, I'm not saying you need to be the stoic guy and just has nothing affects you. Right, because that's what they're that's what they'll say. Oh, you so you believe in stoicism, right? So stoicism means you don't feel a thing and you're just this rock and, and it's like, no, you're a human being. There's is some varying degrees. I'd say I don't think it's healthy that, to that's not like have the, emotions, but I don't think it's also healthy to be just this complete, you know, brick. That's so. that's the worst advice to give somebody if they want to go have success with women. Be stoic. Yeah. Mm. You are because gonna be, you're going to be you're going to be alone for a long time because you've got to bring some emotionalism into it, haven't you? You've got to fucking spark her. You've got to spark her emotions. Right. And, yes, and to do that, to if you're something to, to deter from the everyday boring life that a woman goes through. Well, to put it like this, John. You probably have seen these dudes in bars who stand around like they're James Bond and <laughs> they think in order to get girls, I'm going to have to be like the James Bond character, strong, silent, moody, et cetera, et cetera. And they get no action at all. And it's the dudes who run around and like actually go and start conversations mm-hmm. and interact with them mm-hmm. get, yeah. get the action. Right? I make fun of those guys with the girls and then I take them home. <laughs> I, mean, I, think yeah. Rich, yeah. I think Rich is onto something, though. There's a hormonal aspect to this. Mm. Like, obviously... With Rich's gigantic high ass testosterone going on, for him, it's I know I don't mean to like to disparage him. I'm not saying it from that perspective at all. But I'm saying is it's very easy for Rich to like have an adequate amount of stoic, not care about something unless it affects him. And then he cares about something. Like give the one fuck. Now picture the kind of guy, and I mean everything's had a little effect. Soy in the food has that little effect. Birth control in the drinking water, a little effect. All these things taken together most likely explain why what is it like a one percent drop per year in testosterone of men over age but now there's like a what a 50 percent drop that have happened just from the new generation <coughs> so we can and there's, there's no stock star shortage of people talking about we'll just feel or think better a large part of it is just dude your hormones are out of whack like everything in your life is designed bpd plastic bottles were making people soy Re- receipts and yeah, maybe it's only each one's like 1% of the problem, but there's 100 or 200 of those things out there. So yeah. a lot of this stoicism people have, it's like it's like asking a chick to be stoic. She's like, I don't know what that means. They don't have the hormones for it. And a lot of these guys don't either. I hate to say it, the gym, the gym and TRT is kind of like almost the uh, the Rosetta Stone of this stuff. Is that the right metaphor? Should I say Rosetta Stone? Or I haven't really become fluent in Japanese since I started taking TRT, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but rich would you say that uh testosterone i mean we've covered this ground before but i mean testosterone levels have, have appear to have dropped in the west right over the last 20 oh, years it's not so. that they appear to have they definitely have like they've yeah. looked at the bone structure from excavation sites um you know mm-hmm. from ten thousand years ago and testosterone levels are like half what they used to be for the same age men is, um is it partly because like it's you know, it's been sort of, is, is there a sort of uh, Darwinian aspect to this in the sense well, that dudes that's just, just don't have, have to be, you know. Yeah, well, that's just one one part of it. Then there's environmental estrogens that are increasing, you know, mm. the estrogenic levels in men. Then you've got what Rolo talks about, which is, you know, forcing boys to be raised in the school system hey, girl. and treated like they're feminized, uh, or sorry, treated like they're defective girls. Um, you know, you start compounding all those things together and it's no wonder you've got these, you know, weak soy boys taking pictures like, like yeah, this, yeah, you know, doing like mouths. weird stuff New like mouths. that and then going full on. I don't yeah. want to compete on the sexual marketplace, you know, shame on you for having fun. Yeah. Um, 
but cool, you know, whatever. I mean, if you don't want to go looking for the answers and don't want to do the work, it just makes it easier for guys like us and the men that follow our work to get better results with women on the sexual marketplace and in life in general. I mean, I know that there's been a, a difference in um, my level of focus and my ability to give uh, ZFG on a more frequent basis since I got on on TRT for sure. Like I'm, I'm way more right. level headed. I think yeah. what, a lot of, what a lot of guys are going to say is, well, you guys don't know what stoicism is. Like, stoicism is not what you guys are saying it is. It's, read the same it, book you read, buddy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you watch, like, channels like uh, Ryan Ryan Halliday's got a, a channel mm. called The Daily Stoic, I think, and it's pretty mm. good. Like, he breaks down, you know, standard yeah. stoic beliefs and philosophies. But, you know, it's just one way to approach it. You know, there's there's a lot more to it. Like there's a lot more to the mechanics than just oh let's read Ryan's book sort of thing and follow those steps. Yeah. Well, I, there's guys there's guys coming on the stream and before who were saying like oh you know that's not what stoicism is and blah blah blah. I mean like you know I've read Marcus Aurelius and that's a that's a great book by the way and I've read Seneca as well. So I think we all you know we we've all got that background. I think we're talking about it in a, in a slightly more colloquial way here, right? You know, in terms of sort of like how you how stoicism manifests itself in everyday life. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I mean, guys are going to come and quibble those things, like, but we're not having an academic debate here. It's we're talking it's more generally. It's it. not having any emotions. It's being in control of those emotions. And right? I would argue yeah. a lot of those critics are idiots. Like, I'll use a point here, Troy. I did that video on uh, Byron Bernstein, the wreckful, the guy who committed mm. suicide on the Twitch stream. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. was fairly critical of Dr. K, the healthier gamey gate, gamer gate for his solution to depression was to plug your nose and breathe deep and meditate. <laughs> and I am getting comments in the chat of guys like you just don't understand. He is really helping. He even talked to Byron and he said Byron <laughs> felt a lot better. I'm like, dude, listen to yourself. You're telling me how he was effective. I think we've got pretty uncontroversial proof that it was not effective. He's fucking dead. That's just yeah. it. And so you're telling me, like, you guys don't understand stoicism. Stoicism solved my life. I'm like, dude, then why are you watching self-help gurus like us on the internet? Like, seriously. People, people just love to defend those ego investments and lies when when it when you violate, you know, the safe world theory of their icon. You know, when their icon goes and commits suicide or, you know, the treatment that they were getting. Oh, how would you know, how dare you say that it might have been something outside of what this professional said? You know, who are you, yeah. Mr. Red? That's Man? the whole Twitch circle yeah. jerk. I was on a Twitch stream tonight. My buddy's the number one Twitch streamer in uh, Japan right now. And I was on his stream. We were just doing some uh, he was doing some like street streaming, whatever. And I was just on there chatting with the, the whole people. And it's funny, like <clears throat> if you guys really look in the, into the depths of the Twitch ecosystem, Rich, you'll love this. So my buddy's been, he's been live streaming on Twitch for three years, okay? After two years of live streaming, okay, putting on a backpack, having a shoulder cam, doing 10 to 12 hours in a row, walking around well, with a 50-pound backpack, okay? What the? He's streaming, he's streaming the whole day. Yeah, it's called, it's called IRL uh, streaming. Yeah, uh, yeah, in that, real life, yeah. Okay, mm. so he finally got the purple twitch check verified after two years his wife started live streaming three weeks ago she already has two thousand subscribers <laughs> and she's already a verified partner on twitch already and she's three weeks three yeah. weeks the entire yeah. twitch ecosystem is based upon thirsty men giving money to women and well, I hope they like snacks because my Madeleine video needs to go viral real quick. So <laughs> having a conversation with all those guys and just and looking at the ecosystem that it is. And I was I was because that guy, Byron, came to Japan and my buddy, Rob, mm -hmm. they were streaming together and they had done tons of streams. I you could see him. You could read his body language. He's simping so hard for that fucking six out of ten. And um, the guy fucking killed himself. And it's sad because the reality <clears throat> is this. The problem he had was he was fucking blue pilled. And yeah. he, he was putting this. The thing about being a blue pill, I kind of feel for the ladies to an extent. And don't jump down my fucking throat yet, you animals in the chat. The point I'm trying to say is like when you put like this in like this crazy amount of pressure on this girl like you're my soulmate and yeah. you are the reason i live and this woman was like jesus fucking christ like i just my... shit this morning <laughs> and, and like i don't feel that great i feel bloated I'm, I'm on my period you know that's a that's a massive pressure i get like when guys 
call me or, or DM me on Instagram like, hey, high commander of the hot dude army. I'm like, listen, dude, chill. Like, it's just a joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, you know, imagine somebody be like, sincerely from their heart like you like you know what if i built a shrine to rich in my room and i was like every day like rich you're the dad i never had and i love you and you're you're my soul dad rich like rich would be like yo get this fucking dude like can we adj this guy get him out of here like, you know? <laughs> this is sounding this is all sounding a little bit too realistic john yeah, yeah. but that's the thing and the, that's the thing the poor bastard he he was just he was he was simped out, man, and he, he took his life, and that yeah. sucks. Like no woman is worth killing yourself over. No well, again, it's, woman, not yeah, even and that's mom. back to the feelings part of this. Everybody's yeah. defending the guy. Like he was literally the kid was literally thinking, kid, he's thirty, but he was literally thinking in that, those sessions, even though like caveat, we're not trying to help, whatever. He thought they were helping. They felt better. Feelings didn't matter, and clearly, feelings don't matter. We have the receipts for that. As tragic as it is, well, it, would you say? I mean. Rollo is the godfather of the red pill um, amongst us today. Um, would you say that the red pill is an antidote to emotionalism? Because in the past, be be before we had this community, before we had this sort of knowledge that we've now got, or, or it, before it was sort of disseminated in the way that it is, guys would just go off the deep end about the way that women behaved, about infidelities, the end of relationships and stuff like that. Now we've got this framework, which is, which is based in logic. It's based in... Um, evidence it's based in evolutionary biology etc etc mm -hmm. and that gives guys another way another lens to look at this stuff through right it's not just like oh she left me so i'm going to kill myself now we've got this more we mm -hmm. can take a step back and look at it in a more intellectual way right i would like to think so i think the, the problem with the red pill at least for this last well maybe last two generations is it's i think it is too pragmatic for them it is too critical for them yeah it's, uh it's it requires effort it's not like sound bite you know you toss it in your mouth as you run through the uh you know the, the to-go window at mcdonald's right i mean you have to actually have some sort of investment in it i've taught i've called this though with the tldr generation yeah and that's the hardest part like everybody like okay roll I, I i believe all this stuff uh give me the program give me the 12 rules of for life that i can so i can have the you know the the best life i can possibly have yeah, it doesn't work that way you're d you're deprogramming all the gaslighting you've received since fucking adolescence and that's it the, takes that's, time yeah and that's it is it's this mass gaslighting you want to know why we're in cancel culture right now because of this mass media cross culture globalized gaslighting that this is the way you know this is how thing this is how everybody else agrees what everybody else thinks and mm. what happens is when they get pushback on that then they want to erase you they want you to go away they want you to 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 exit their reality and yeah. that and that's I, I think endemic of this culture but i think when the when i was when i was coming up <laughs> i had i had, actually i had to talk i had to school some guy on twitter just uh, like yesterday or the day before uh, about like how long i have been like the red pill as a term has been around i can mm. show you a so suave post that i put up in 2004 where i used the term red pill so it's been around yeah, old. in just 2015 so I, 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 and as I was doing that, I was thinking, gosh, you know, what's the, what's been the progression from about like, say 20, like 2002, which is when I sort of got into this to where we're at right now, like 18 years. And in that time, I was looking at some old posts that I was, I was talking about and really what it was intended to be from an intersexual dynamics, intergender understanding, you know, understanding evolutionary psychology, sociology, anthropology, all of these like kind of subfields that sort of build into that. It started out as how do I get laid? How do how, you know what's the best? What's the best techniques? Teach me game, teach me pickup, so I can solve my reproductive problem. But the thing is, is that once you get to that, it's like there's so much more added into it now over the course of 18 years but when it began it was about pragmatism i'm not a, a stoic per se i mean i i certainly uh, ascribe to i mean I, I see the wisdom in stoicism but mm -hmm. i've always been very pragmatic i'm not <laughs> people would say well really you're a cynic or you're a pessimist i'm like no i'm not a pessimist and they go i'm certainly not an optimist per se but i'm certainly a pragmatist if nothing else so it's always connect the dot 
here's here's the thing that's why i don't do prescriptions i say here's the evidence here's the tools let's talk about this let's debate about this let's hash this out so we can find something of a you know predictable was it a, a, a a framework for predictability, let's say, so that we can go forward with what we know as being sort of best practices. That's rooted in pragmatism. And that is something that is like sorely lacking today, in certainly in this generation, because it's all about fe it's feels before reels. And mm -hmm. nobody even wants the reels anymore. So it's just feels now. There's no there are no more reels. <laughs> you know what I joke? It's yeah. like that Carl Sagan line to how do you bake a pie? First, you create the universe. A lot of this is like, how do I get girls? Well, that's like, it's an easy solution, but that's the problem is first you have to unfuck an entire lifetime of dumb mental models, abandonment issues from childhood, rejection fears from adulthood, chemical issues from the environment, just getting from negative God knows what to zero. That's the big hurdle to get from zero to one. How do I turn myself from good guy to getting laid? That's one's easy. That's just, you know, do approach. Here's an opener. Go fill your boots. And I think that's mm -hmm. why, like, it's not a very wide space. Red pill doesn't, it's everything that needs to be discussed has been discussed, but there's yeah. such a depth to it. And this is where you start getting into why that plugging your nose psychotherapy doesn't work. Why feeling yeah. better about your depression doesn't make you less depressed. Why feeling frustrated is and acting woke isn't going to make you better with girls and that's the whole thing like you're saying feels versus reels and we're just losing yeah. that and it's very hard there's very few voices that yeah, actually yeah. talk about substantive change i think yeah, there's us yeah. and then the international or, or international dork web whatever they call that thing now is that still around <laughs> i don't know if that's still going to be honest. but rich and john you've both got pretty big uh communities of men right who come to you for help in various different areas would you say that emotionalism or excessive emotionalism is at the root of many of these dudes problems in, in one form or another? Yeah, it's a yes. big part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, like, like you got to think like, you know, everybody thinks I'm so like, I'm a big dumb guy and that's fine. I'm stupid, whatever. Um, You're big. But like, you know, you have to like, you have to look at like what I did with my life, right? I got on a plane with $2,500 in my pocket and a one way ticket to Japan and said, I'm going to yeah. make this fucking work. How many dudes would shit their pants <laughs> trying to do that how many guys don't even have I a fucking have passport? Japan. how many people don't even have a passport well how okay. did you feel when you did how did you feel when you did it did you feel terrified. nervous yeah terrified absolutely yeah. terrified but i was like yeah. I, I i was just i was so hell-bent on making my dreams come true because after i lost my faith in god and all that shit and i realized i wasn't going to live forever and there's no heaven and it's just a big black sleep coming for everybody I was like, fuck this, man. I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. And if nice. you don't like it, I mean, the worst thing you could do is kill me. And I was going to die anyway. So I, mean, I got you beat there. But <laughs> a lot of guys, they're just terrified. They're terrified. They're like, it's so true when they say that people are just, they're not terrified <clears throat> of being inadequate. They're terrified of being awesome. And mm -hmm. I tell guys, you know, you can be awesome. Just join me in the hot dude army because we're the only. Well, you notice a lot of guys are always going to look for permission from from you. Like they'll send you a message, or yeah. even in a community sort of environment where they feel a little more safe and insulated from the outside world, they often look for permission to be great. Yeah, you know Absolutely. what I mean. Absolutely. Like so, so there's a lot of ego preservation in lies and beliefs that do not work, that have not served them, that have not gotten them great results. And they have a hard time letting go of those. It's it's yeah. it's difficult, you know? It's like, you know, you can do a software update on your phone when it says, would you like to update your software tonight at 2, you know, 2 a.m.? It's like, fine, you know, the phone works great, but for most guys, they can't, they can't read like Rolo's book or Ryan's book or, you know, get Troy's uh, content or get into any of the communities and learn it overnight. That's like the worst mistake that I see guys do is like, they'll, They'll go through the rational mail in one pass or they'll join a community for a month and they'll make a one month commitment and then they go and take off. And it's yeah. like, no, if you've had real bad results your entire life, this this new information is like drinking from a fire hose. And if you want to get the water in, you're going to have to work at it for a little bit to get all the information. It's going to take some time and you're going to have to right. do the work. That's a co-op program. It's not thing, an education. We live in this we live in this this instant gratification society. And that's why when you're really, when you're like, I'm on the, like this month is the five year anniversary for modern life dating. Okay. Happy birthday. 
Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Uh, for, the last, <laughs> <laughs> for the last four years, nobody knew who the fuck I was. And I'm still a nobody on the internet in the big, you know, internet sphere of things, right? But I did the work. I put the grind in, and now I'm I'm doing very okay, and I'm very happy, and I think that everything's going to keep growing. But, I mean, let's just take something pretty simple, right? Like, people think like, oh, you know, you guys are just some YouTube stars. You know, you upload something, you click <laughs> something, and then you, you're overnight celebrity, right? That's they what they know. said about Jackson Pollock. He just threw, yeah. painted a painting. Like, dude. They don't know about... They don't know about thumbnails they don't know about titles they don't know about keywords they don't know about when youtube puts you in the sandbox they don't know about the algorithm they don't know about any of that stuff and it takes time like rich said and yeah. even if you were to watch a two thousand dollar course and it was like boom here's how to do everything if you think you're going to sit down in one go and be like boom now i'm pewdiepie you're full and that's the problem because you know what the average time somebody waits for a website to load these days is it's like five seconds or something not isn't it? Math. not even four four wow. seconds one, two, three, Click. four. Five. Holy cow! I was already getting bored of this hearing about. They are. You know what I mean, yeah. think, you think I'm gonna wait more than four seconds? Me? Like they say from under a pile of Cheeto dust, trying to get to like Rich's like community login or my community login or something. And that's why. That's why I have no mercy. I have ice in my veins because it is the greatest time to be alive. It is the most fantastic time to be alive in the age. Of ignorant in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. If you're fat, if you're broke, and you're sexless, find the nearest mirror, look into it, and realize it's your fault, and then get to work. Because nobody gives a shit. Nobody yeah. cares about your traumas. Nobody cares. And nobody. See, I would argue, and here, Rolo, let me know if I'm off my rocker here. But here's the thing: it's not that guys are afraid of failure. People will like men raise this defective women. So keep that in the back of your mind as I'm saying this. Guys don't mind going to a job that screws them over and failing in that way because it's not their fault. Here's the thing, though. Carve your own path. Go to Japan with $2,500. Build your empire like Rich did. Did all this stuff. It's not that it's a fear of failure, but nobody told you to do these things. Uh, one of my guys was talking to me today about this in ours. So you took it upon yourself to take a risk, and it failed. And I think a lot of people can't stand that. It has the same vibe as... A girl feeling rejection and having that existential fear of getting booted from the tribe. Well, one thing that occurs to me is that when we say emotionalism, guys might be thinking, oh, like big emotion, like sadness or fear yeah. or terror and all that kind of Anger stuff. Anger is an emotion too. But, but, but it's actually, but it's actually those more, it's those smaller, more subtle emotions that could really fuck you over. Like for example, what John's talking about, building a YouTube channel. You know, he could, you could get bored. You could be like, well, I'm, I'm uploading these bloody videos every day. Nobody's watching them. This is really boring. So I'm going to stop. Or you get embarrassed because you think nobody's watching my videos. This is a bit embarrassing. I'm going to stop, right? It's, it's those little emotions that get in the way and they stop you from sort of continuing. So is this about having a really just bloody-minded sort of focus yeah. on what you want to achieve and just going for it? Of course. Well, look at disgust. How many guys have turned down a chance <laughs> of sex with a hot girl because they're disgusted of her notch count? It's like, dude, yeah, exactly. you're just smashing. Yeah. You're smashing on the weekends. What do you care if she's from a good, wholesome Mormon family? A like, lot of on. these guys are full of garbage. Are you kidding me? Listen, there are some dumpster diving girls out there that these goose would get with. Just and because. God bless them. God bless those <laughs> slum monster <laughs> chicks. I, 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 I agree with what you're saying, though, Troy. Is It's not just the big, grandiose, emotional, you know, like get on one knee and... and you yeah, know, beg her to be like, I'm your density. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's not it's not that. It's this kind of low lying, underlying belief that emotion is everything. And I'm I was looking in the chat here a little bit, and I, I get into this a little bit in book four uh, when it comes to how we uh, have deified like we've made godlike emotion like when we talk about love god is love or this emotion is everything if i'm feeling jealousy i'm going to write a song about it if i'm feeling uh desire if i'm feeling these feelings then as this feeling you know and i'm an artistic guy right but i've never really understood that like when people would tell me like well you're an artistic guy you must be like really touchy-feely dude and i'm like well 
Yeah, I can be, but like the thing is, is like I don't see why that, why that, I don't make that connection. Like, oh, you're an artist, so therefore you must be. That's you expressing your emotions. No, you can be an illustrator, you can be an artist, a creative individual. That has nothing to do with you expressing your emotion. But that's the common thought. The yeah. common thought is that emotion is more than just your a, a processing you know, means of processing information for a human being. And and I hate it because of like people say, you're you're killing the magic and emotion. It's like, yeah, you're goddamn right I am because that's what gets people putting their fucking you know nooses around their necks because they can't live without her. Why? Because you're in an emotional state and you have elevated emotion to this to something of cosmic significance when in fact Emotions evolved in human beings as a way of interpreting their surroundings. How do I feel about this? And primarily, it is women who prioritize emotion before reason. Emotion, I can make you feel anger by shooting you full of, you know, decabolin or whatever steroid. I can give you roid rage. That's Ren, <laughs> Ren is the fucking miracle. Ren, you, can see, you can see how disconnected Rolo is. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> deep what? Is that deep a new one that I don't angry. know about? Yeah, pretty well. I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm reaching. Trend. Okay, whatever. I can give you roid rage. I can make, I can, I can give you chemicals that will alter your mood and make you feel an emotion as a result of those chemicals, you can do that with cocaine. You can do that with heroin. You can do that with, you can feel all this stuff. You can take ecstasy and want to be in love with everybody that's around you. Start licking right. flagpoles. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But is, but is, is that real? Is that magical? Oh, I took this drug or I, I, I did magic mushrooms and I saw God. Like that's an emotional response. Okay, Roosh. You I was going to say that was a little bit Goldman-y. Yeah. Because <laughs> no, that's, that's the real Troy. That's really what happened. Well, you're chemically induced to feel those things. Does that mean that it's of some cosmic, magical, metaphysical you know, significance? No, it's just how your body works. It's just how your brain works as well. And there's yeah. functions behind that. And when you tell people that, it destroys their ego investments in how important emotionalism should be to them and to everybody else that's around them. Yeah. Well, on another level, it's kind of about comfort as well, isn't it? People just don't want to feel discomfort in this day and age. And an example from game for this is uh, some dudes we were talking to in John's, uh, one of John's webinars last week, you know, we, you get guys coming up with questions saying things like, oh, I really want to go and speak to some girls. I really want to get my dating sorted out, but I just feel really like uncomfortable. You know, what should I do? I'm really rusty. Uh -huh. I just, and it's Good. sort of like, it's You're sort of like, well, feel uncomfortable. it's sort of like, well, you know, in the end, you, you've just got to fucking go and do it. I mean, yes, you could do affirmations. Yes, you could do visualizations, blah, 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 all of these things. But, but in the end, you're just going to have to go out there and talk to somebody, risk getting a drink thrown over you or told to F off, and then do it again and do it again. And then you'll start to get, build your momentum again, right? Yeah, and don't reason your cave. Be in the moment. That's the thing. If you're not well, comfortable with these things, it means you're not any good at it. So if you're discomfortable, well, like that's the best feeling on earth. That means yeah. you're making progress because you're not used yeah. to this. But they don't want to feel that discomfort, even that small discomfort of it's a bit embarrassing to go and talk to this girl. Let that's alone like, anything not, that's more, like not know. working out because you don't like the feeling of the pump. Like, dude, that's that's what happens. That's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be awkward when you haven't talked to a girl in six months because you haven't done it in six months, you dope. Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. These guys are, but that's the thing. And it feels it's at the point, Troy, yeah. I know you and John have both gotten to that point where you're hitting on girls and like you kind of miss the anxiety of walking up. Oh, if she rejects me or not. It was kind of like yeah. interesting, wasn't it? And now it's just yeah. like, like a checklist. You're like, Hey, how are you going? I got to well, go back and see my friends in a minute, but uh, I got a question for you. Do you consider well, it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And in a funny way that can actually be a disadvantage because when you're, if you get, if you're doing it too much, you almost get to this point where it's just a bit boring and you're just like, and you're going through the motions and because you're not nervous at all. Yeah. And then the way you come across to them isn't as good as, you know, if you if they're a bit, a bit more like, uh, you know, like a little bit more authenticity there, really, a little bit more nerves there. I yeah, think. like dis um, discomfort gets a totally a bad rap. It is so fun. It's the fire under your ass when you need to work because you're like, I'm uncomfortable because I'm hungry. I think yeah. I should go get a job. I'm, yeah. I'm comfort nervous is... as hell talking to this chick. But you know what? It's more fun than jerking off in my living room. Like discomfort <laughs> is the wonderful male emotion that exists to let you know, hey, so, this thing is not what you're used to doing. 
and that's awesome if what you're used to doing is sucking really bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, we should celebrate discomfort, really, shouldn't we? Of course. That's where well, the growth is. Well, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have a, I have an essay. Um, I think I. <laughs> I think it's See, he's a, just phoning in that statement now. Yeah, <laughs> you now. need a T-shirt that says "I have an article." I have an essay. For that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> an essay for that. Um, no, I have a um, an essay. Well, it's actually, I think it's a chapter in book one. Is um, content and discontent, and I think it is a misnomer to believe that human beings are our natural state is discontent. And how yeah. to manage that? There is no such thing as content, contentment, yeah. and I think that we have this really kind of, uh, it, and again, okay, because of emotionalism, we have this idea that we can reach this state of contentment, or you can. The only real contentment is in God, right? Okay. Well, the thing is, is that once you get to a point, the human condition is to be discontent. It is to to get to that. You, I, hey, I finally got my degree. What do I want now? I want my master's. What do you want now? Oh, I want my, my doctor. There's always yeah. the next level. I got to the top of this mountain. Great. What's at the top of that mountain over there? That kind of thing is like you can get to a point of contentment, but that contentment doesn't last very long because there's something else. Because you have achieved what you were discontent and you believed you needed to achieve, now that you've achieved that, that allows you to get onto something else. And that's yeah. a good thing. There's yes. nothing wrong with discontent. That's what I hate about that is like, well, you're discontent. You're frustrated. I was like, yeah, that's fine. It's not about the discontent. It's how you how you deal with it. You can, yeah. you can deal with discontent constructively and creatively, or you can deal with it destructively and and like kill yourself because yeah. you're discontent yeah, and you can't get anywhere with that. It's creative discontent versus destructive discontent. And you know what? When we're emotional, when we have a society that is based on emotionalism, that's a lot of discontent that's never going to be satisfied for these guys because they don't understand why they're discontent and they can't be creative about it because if they do, it goes against the emotionalism that they have because they believe at some point that they can be content when they cannot. What happens after the riots? What happens after you destroy all the government? And everything's crashed down and you're, everything's built, it burned down. What, what do you have to do? What's the better plan? What are you going to build? You know, oh, you're, you're getting a divorce. What are you going to do with yourself once you're out, you know, once you're back in the sexual marketplace? It's like from little micro decisions to big, grandiose, you know, social, yeah. political, sociopolitical decisions as well. And it all comes back to this idea that, well, I want to be content. I want to, yeah. you know, I want to live this great, perfect life. Guess what? That's boring. Perfect is boring. And you know what? Yeah. You know that too. Perfect is boring. I'll get the perfect Exactly. Guy. Exactly. Will Smith, right? Will Smith is he's he's rich. He's famous. He's got all his he's he's an alpha, right? He's got to be an alpha. Look at that dude's face today. That's <laughs> that's a man. That oh, that's hot. That's hot. Watch, that's his, hot. watch his body man. language in that interview with Jada, and you can see the disease in him. Man, that is content to the highest level. Huge. And I, you know, I'm almost a little bit more worried about Will Smith than I am about like Harry, Harry Markle. <laughs> well, Harry Markle. Is, how many girls have had a very perfect, comfortable life and completely nuked it for some strange on the side with the pool boy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, maybe, yeah, maybe sexually women do sometimes uh, actually go towards discomfort. They go towards a situation because they can, sometimes women can have this very sort of destructive element to them, can't they? They will, yeah. they will take risks and to they blow up relationships and things like that. They'll be like, I don't know why I do it. Yeah. Whereas guys yeah. actually, because, because when you think about it, guys tend to stay in substandard relationships for longer, don't they? Because it's comfortable, right? Yeah. It's Riffold's oh, law, man. The girl determines the uh, terms of the, of the relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're making but, topic sometime. Yeah. yeah. But Rich, when you talk about uh, do the work, do you think the reason you need to keep saying that and a lot of guys don't do the work is because they want to be comfortable and doing the work is actually uncomfortable? And do you think that actually sometimes going forward into discomfort is a good strategy for a guy to have? Well, we've, well, we've been, I mean, we've slowly been conditioning and feminizing society and men, especially in such a way that it's like, we need safe spaces. You're not allowed to bully. You can't spank your kids anymore. I mean, you can go on and on and on down the list. It's like, what'd you say? You can't expel them anymore either now. 
Yeah, that's yeah, mm -hmm. that's a new thing in Ontario. Apparently, is you can't expel kids under grade six. Apparently, because it would be deemed as racism. Because for the most part, the kids that are causing problems come from single mother households, um, you know, from ethnic minorities. So they're not letting you expel kids anymore from school. Uh, I think so, they just want to keep them in the indoctrination machine. Yeah, the, it's just it's just a shame that um, you know so many guys have been conditioned their entire lives to just say, well. My mom and society and school and, and the media and, and, you know, the government's been saying for years that, you know, people have to accept me more and I have to, um, you know, just, just get all this free stuff. And it's like, dude, the world has never worked that way. It's, it's, and it's never going to work effectively that way going forward in the, the future. And men will never lead, lead a fulfilled life thinking that. It's just a big, fat lie. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you... Let me ask you this, because a lot of people are talking about this. <clears throat> Do you really think Will Smith gives a shit that this bitch is with this other dude? The fact they televise it, that's the weird thing. Well, you can tell by his body language that he does, even though he's trying to like, hey, lady, do you want to take ownership? But she just turned that entire thing around. and was like, well, it was your fault. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you think he's simping after her? Is he simping? Oh, he's definitely a simp. Yeah. He's the mother of his kids. <laughs> of course, he's probably got one anus. It's yeah. very, I, it's I very just, blue pill. It's that's very, so funny because, like, I just, I'm not even fucking rich or famous like him, and like, I can't find an ounce of my bones to fucking to to, to care about. Like, uh, Miss MLD is like kind of in the corner of my eye right now, and she's kind of not, and I'm assuming she's banging a dude right now. Like that's just, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the mentality you have to have. Like, All right, you know, Jack Murphy, let us know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Jack's it's around now. More well, than think, ever nowadays. Uh, if you guys have gone through a girl's phone, gone through her email, check what she's getting Tinder login verification codes, Bumble, all this stuff, bro. That's the, you want to you want to trip down the Red Pill Express lane. Ask a girl that you want to bang. Let me let me see your phone for one hour and just just Batman that shit. D deep dive. Go through it. You oh. will come out Red Pill like a motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, do you know do you know what Red Pill guys more? It's not that, like, at least for married guys, it's not when they see their wife's phone finally, if they snoop. It's not that they find out their wife is cheating. It's they find out what their wife says about them when they're not in the room. Yeah. And that's the thing that hits a yeah. lot of guys. Or what they don't say about him and what they say about some other guy. Yeah. Chad, you know, more specific. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. If, you, if you're like me and you don't value a woman's opinion, then you take that thing right out the fucking door and you're good to go. But that, but yeah, that's that the main, right? It's the progress. But that in itself, John, that is a lack of emotionalism. That's because that is not so. So say Mrs. MLD right now was banging uh, what's his name, Jack Murphy, right in the other room. <laughs> I mean, let's just say, let's just say, say you saw his beard like poking out past the door, and he's like, you know, doing whatever. I, what would you do? I mean, you would just throw her out, and then tonight you'd be pimping, and that would be it, right? <laughs> I have a fucking waiting list of fucking replacements in my phone, so I don't so, care. So <laughs> do you let her the courtesy of finishing first, or do you cut them off in the middle? Like, I'm paying rent. No, no. Finish Dude, outside I, on the lawn. I would charge a private live stream and be like, watch this cheating whore right now. <laughs> Make the world you, star in the background. You should do a, tic, you should do a TikTok, because I reckon on TikTok you would get, like, just... You know, half a million views the on that. Chinese thing. let it roll, so I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, good. I think yeah. it'd be good. But, but, but what you're describing, that is, that is an, a lack of emotionalism, right? Because yeah, most most dudes wouldn't be like that. So, is that something that was natural to you, or was it something that you just acquired through the years of like pimping and all the rest of it? <laughs> I learned because I used to care about women, what th what women thought about me, and I used to believe in love and all this shit. And mm. now, I mean, love is transactional in 2020. And if you're if you're walking around looking for love, you're a fucking fool. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's always about. been transactional, you know, for being honest, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so I do. I was just a little bit later to the party. I didn't figure that out until my later part of my twenties. But um, <clears throat> now it's just like, you know, I'm just done done pedestalizing any woman morally. Like people are like, oh yeah, all these girls are sluts, but not my girl. She's fucking, you know, she, she I forgot that one, bro. You know, like, yeah, no, your sure. girl's a hoe too, dude. Your girl's a hoe too. And that's okay because the majority of them are. Yeah. So like, it's just, again, going back to it, it's this. You guys are getting emotionally caught up over shit that doesn't put money in your bank account, that doesn't put muscle on your bones and doesn't put more hoes in your roster.
Period. Or not even equally invested back. I think that's the issue. Emotionally yeah. investing in somebody who's emotionally invested in you, that's one thing. But it's a lot of these guys, they invest into people more than they invest back. That's where simping comes from. If well, a girl was if a girl yeah. was hooked on you, like what's that punk guy from the 80s? The one where he and his girlfriend were doing heroin together. Oh, Rolo Sid Nancy. Uh, uh, Sid Sid Nancy. <laughs> you get like you telling me he's he's simping for Nancy? No, man, that investment was equal. I'll like take there was an- for eight hundred, Alex. <laughs> exactly. Now, what if if she was like a nice church girl, not putting up with his shit and sleeping around on him? Yeah, he's over invested. By the way, you guys yes. look up Sid and Nancy. The Gen Xers know what I'm talking about. There's a movie. Yeah. Sid and Nancy is really. There's a really good movie with Gary Oldman. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. But all right, so here's the thing, right? So obviously, the guys on this panel, you've you've got you've come to this stoicism, this lack of emotionalism, maybe partly through experience and partly through natural sort of inclination. But what if the, the guy that's watching this stream and he is like a simp? He's there, he's listening to Bruno Mars. He's like, oh my god, baby, you know, and like shots fired, and he's, and, he's, are you? and he's crying his eyes out over some girl. I mean, can a guy learn to become? less emotional can a, can a guy learn to be more stoical if he just immerses himself in this in this stuff do you think in this yeah listen to dead mouse get off of bruno mars exactly i know go get get back into it like <laughs> or who else like the weekend or so he's listening to well, the weekend i, or I think what ha- what's happening i i made a joke I, I maybe i was a little bit over the top with this but i was i was looking at that that whole that Instagram thing I was saying was like the infographic where it's like we need to normalize men becoming more feminine, blah blah blah. And I thought this sounds like an old another old punk song, right? Institutionalized by suicidal tendencies. Because I'm not crazy. You're the one that's crazy. Exactly. And it's like not it's not your mom and your dad that think you're crazy. It's the whole freaking world that think you're crazy because you are not aligning with that world of emotionalism anymore and all i want is a pepsi rollo and it's yeah and it's very <laughs> difficult i think it's i think it's more difficult for men than it is for women because as i was saying before women tend to prioritize emotion the emotional process before the rational process for men it used to be the rational process was first and then how they felt about it that's how we got things like oh this guy is emotionally unavailable or he's not in touch with his emotions it's like yeah there's a yeah, reason with you <laughs> yeah, about that too but there's a reason for that because we evolved to prioritize rationality and reason before we get to emotion and if you go and you look at the studies you look at the neurological studies and you look at the the, what the fmri studies men process emotions differently than women but in a gynocentric social order in this feels before real social order there's something wrong with you you need to be institutionalized because you don't emote like a woman and there has to be some kind of disorder called traditional masculinity or conventional masculinity that you suffer from because you don't emote and you don't prioritize emotion like a woman does so what does that do it creates generation after generation of guys that go there's something wrong with me i need to be more like a fe- a female i need to identify with the feminine more i need to be a yeah. male feminist i how can i i need to be transgender i need to be more i, I need to put on makeup that's now available at cvs drug stores in their own special department for men now because that'll make me more acceptable in a female correct society that prioritizes emotion before reason and you for men they're always going to struggle with that because you are not wired for that your your evolved mental firmware is instinct reason and then emotion but in a gynocentric social order it teaches you to pry to, to flip that the software overrides the hardware Damn straight. You're made to Chuck Spears. Stop picking berries, you dopes. <laughs> yeah. and, even just, and even just saying for, for me or for Red Pill or anybody else or Stoics or whatever saying, you, you really, it's okay to be in control of your emotions. It's okay to not be as emotional as a man. It's okay to do that. For me to say that, that's heresy right now. Cancel him. Cancel that guy. Because the extreme he, is now removed. Not, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a question here from uh, Biz Kits Go. Saying, "Oh, women, the new harem leaders." I mean, that Rollo, that might be one for you because you talked about yeah. polyamory uh, 
Oh, well, that's, that's the polyamory question is what that is. And it's getting that. I think we're, if we're not there yet, we're getting there. We're already recognizing poly relationships now where I think the state of Mass Massachusetts has decided that they are going to recognize like multiple partner marriages now because that's, uh, that's how we're, well, we don't want to step on their feet. That's how they feel about marriage, right? That's how they're going to define marriage. And, you know, yeah. other societies that do that as well and other religions and cultures that do that as well. So I, I, from that perspective, I can't really argue with it, but I think the reason why we're leaning towards poly right now is because we have so if people, I answered this, I think, on John's stream. is like they, people think that there's a pendulum. Well, it's going to swing one way and it'll swing back. No, it's not. It's not swinging back. There is no pendulum. You only go forward, and that's it. And so right now, the reason why I think we're even having this discussion about poly, whether it's one you know, polygamy, it's one guy and many women, which is sort of the ideal, I think, natural state, or else it's the one woman with like four beta orbiters and one guy who knocks her up kind of thing. Or it's her looking for an alpha on the weekend and has her nice, comfortable betas at home during the weekdays. Uh, we're, 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 I think we're at a position right now where we're trying to sort of sort out what's, what's going to be the intersexual, intergender dynamics. And that's being sorted out based on alphas and betas, hypergamy. Uh, alpha fucks, beta bucks, all that stuff, and in that, under those conditions, women are are the primary selectors at this point. So they can, yeah. they can decide what they do. They want to share a successful alpha, or do they want to be the center of attention amongst a you know group of betas? And we see yeah. that online right now. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And then Chris has got a question. I think it's pretty obvious the answer to this one. Do you guys think this that emotion will be front and center this fall in the election? Yeah. Already it's already is. front and center right now. It's yeah, all listen, about the field. It's going to be nonstop because this this is like humanity. This things aren't changing. Humanity is just being exposed. We've always been these emotional fucking dorks. It just I I believe, <laughs> I'm just, I'm mm -hmm. starting to think this that the corporations they're just trying to make people more emotional and force this onto people because they're easier to manipulate and take money from. In my opinion. I don't think they're making it more emotional. I just think that's where the money is. So you go where the money is. Right. Emotional. Yeah, but it, but here's the thing. Like... If you want to say the election is emotional, put it this way. Name one platform that Biden is running on other than Orange Man Bad. <laughs> Orange Man Racist. You forgot yeah, exactly. that Exactly. The that's reason... the only thing they're running on is I hate Trump. Well, the reason <laughs> they're not I... running on sanity. I don't think I've, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not American. I'm not over there. But I don't think I've heard Biden say actually one sentence that makes any like logical sense to, to be that, honest i mean he, <laughs> he, he just said some guys weren't black that was basically it so far Biden but, has uh, dementia. and and the reason i know is because my own father had dementia and he's talking exactly like my dad used to talk back in like 2008 2009 I, just don't, I, I don't i don't know enough about american politics but i don't understand why they fielded that guy they should have I don't know well he's, he's he's just he's a, a placeholder at this stage i think oh yeah, yeah. isn't that your re thing is that they're gonna have a female vice president so oh, even yeah. though a chick can't oh, yeah. get in well but she'll be like running Mate, did they did they make that announcement? I I think I've heard rumors that they're leaning toward Kamala Harris, but I don't I don't know. I, I mean, who knows at this stage? But he's already, and of course, this is probably the DNC that's making these declarations. He's already said that he's going to pick a female vice president. Yeah. So well, and then you know, even, even Hillary was uh, looking like a better. The, con the, the conspiracy theory uh, mm -hmm. theorists were saying it was going to be Hillary, so it's like, yeah, Biden, <laughs> and he's gonna, they're going to sneak Hillary, and then Hillary's going to be there. Hillary's going to be there. Well, gonna be there you know, getting, it's getting a lot of up. getting a lot of FaceTime right now. Hey, I was mm -hmm. going to say is that I, when we're talking about the uh, uh, but Chris's uh, emotional question here. One of the reasons why you see like Antifa and BLM and these these uh, you know outrage mobs that are out there, one of the reasons you see them pulling down statues and monuments, or you know uh, trying to change languages, is because it's a, it's an emotional thing. There, it's not just they feel bad about that thing. It's they don't you know I, I laugh when people say, well, aren't they thinking? Don't they know what he stands for? Don't they know his history? They don't. They don't care. They just want to feel. It's about feeling. And you know what? They want you to feel something when they pull that down. It's an emotional response and another emotional response. And if yeah. that didn't work, just like a little kid, if the tantrum didn't work, they're going to try something else. So maybe they're going to go burn churches down or they're going to go protest church. Where Where's the emotion at? 
And that's oh, the problem we, with no police inconsistency. It gets worse before it gets better. They double down on the anger mm -hmm. and the rage because as long as I pout enough, it'll happen. Right. We we'll also notice that part of the reason why they're pulling these statues down, I mean, there's a lot of symbolism in it as well. They can't become better. They can't do the work to be great. They know they'll never be on a pedestal or, you know, as a monument. So what they do is they bring down these things to try to make themselves the feel better, to become greater and mm -hmm. bigger too. Yeah, all and I what was I was going to say is that the that emotional response is of course what I would expect from this. this well, it's the same reason why you see these losers out there. They're doing like eight hour live streams about why the five of us suck or whatever, or how we're ripping off men. We, they're still doing like more of those. Oh, that started. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're they 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 broadcasting they tomorrow. They, to <laughs> they are broadcasting tomorrow. I love it. Nice. I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, yeah, to answer your question, no, I am not homosexual. And yes, this shirt has bicycles on it. And good luck with your live stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another quite good question here from Shonen Spirit Beast saying, if you're a guy that's been raised to be emotional, how would you suggest fixing the damage? Good, good. One day, I mean, the fact that you're already looking get your for ass the beat. Go to a dojo, get your ass beat, and learn how to Environmental change. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, John had to go to Japan. He had to leave not only to a different country, but a different ethnicity, a different language. Sometimes just getting the inputs out of your life will help you make better outputs. I was awesome before Japan, Ryan. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I made Japan more awesome. But no, with this guy, he says, how would you fix it? The fact that you're asking that question, this guy watches me a lot, so I want to answer. Um, the fact that you're asking is a good question um, to be asked in the first place you know the, that's a good question to even have in your mind secondly after you get awareness which a major, majority of you guys have everybody seems to have a lot of awareness in our audience but honestly i would have to say percentage wise i don't know rich what would you say Execute. i'd say five percent of our audience actually takes action versus uh, yeah. 95%. Very, very small execution rate. There's a lot of masturbation. There's a lot of consume, 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 but there's no like acting, right? Because I mean, like you'll see the same name again over and over again, or they'll message you like mm -hmm. every couple months or every six months or every 12 months. And it's almost like, well, nothing's changed, right? Why have you not done any work? Why are you still hiding behind an avatar, right? Uh, I was, mm -hmm. I, so yeah. I would say this is that you need to give yourself permission to unlearn what you've learned. Like give yourself permission to do that. Like a lot of guys, like when they come on and they, they, they ask me or rich or anybody else, what should I do? Do you have any advice for me in this situation? And, and it's usually, they know what the solution yeah. to their problem is. They just simply, they want you to like me or somebody who they see as an authority to say, go, go West young man. They want you to, to actually, you know, th they want you to tell them that that's what they ought to do. You are the only one who can tell you what you ought to do. And you have, a, I, you know, when it comes to uh, like unplugging from the matrix, when it's like, how do I, how do I go? How do I get red pill, bro? It's like, <laughs> well, usually that comes as a, as a point of trauma. And then you get guys like this who say, how do I go about unplugging myself? I'm, I hear what you guys say. It sounds like it makes sense. How do I do that? I'm not in a point of trauma, but I do want to change. That's almost a more difficult guy to deal with than the guy yeah. who's like, oh, I can't take it anymore. And he's like at a point of crisis. He's zeroed out and he's bottomed out. For a guy like this, at least you have the advantage of saying, okay, well, I'm not at, I'm not at point zero right now. So how do, I, how do I change things out? Well, that's, again, that's a good thing that, you're, that you're, re you're realizing this. But you need to give yourself permission to change your mind about yourself. And that's the hardest part because everybody around you will fight you on that. Yeah. Everyone you know will be like, you're trying to be, you're a poser. You're trying well, to be something you're not. And I put a link in the chat. I'm actually going through this right now. I call it the sidebar series. And this is like, this is stuff we even suggest reading before your stuff. This one's Dr. Manuel Smith's, the When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. And these are, you're literally talking about his bill of assertive rights. Like you're allowed to say, you're allowed to be irrational when you make decisions. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to change your mind. You have to give mm -hmm. yourself permission for this stuff. My favorite one is like number 10. You're allowed to say, I don't care. Like let them burn. And you're allowed to be emotionally unavailable. Exactly. And that's what I like about these. Cause it's, it's Nothing a practical thing. It's okay. Here's the, here's the right. You're allowed to say, I don't care about somebody else's problems. And then here's some examples of how you can use them in life. And then you map it to your behaviors. The guy wants to know how to do it. Yeah, it's like a co-op program. You do a little bit of reading. Read Glover's stuff. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Learn 
how not to be like a risk averse pussy. And then you do the breaking free stuff. You practice this in your, in your world. Then you go through when I say no, I feel guilty. You learn how to be assertive, broken record, amused mastery, fogging, all that yeah. stuff, assertive rights. Then you're actually in a space where you're not so far behind that you can read Rolo's work and not treat it like a crutch. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, yeah. I know a lot of guys will read your book and they see and they understand all the lessons and it gives them permission for powerlessness. They're like, well, it's the law of nature. Hypergamy. I'm screwed. Let's go make a live stream oh, calling Rich a cuck for 10 hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, uh, they're missing that fundamental human stuff that they just didn't learn early on, which they could learn later, but they just don't. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Understanding is the first thing, I think. I think, uh, I think, like Ryan says, reading the material, getting your head around this stuff, looking at looking at the reality of life, looking at life straight in the face and going, yes, I understand. This is how things really are. That's the first thing. And then after that, you start to modify your behavior. You know, mm -hmm. you might do it slowly. You might do it incrementally. But you just start to make those small tweaks and then, you know, you, you'll get there. There's another question here. Uh, what is hip hop? Just saying, is the church doing more harm than good when it comes to emphasis on emotion? I stopped going and it seems like it made a difference. Religion oh, it ain't helping. Was awesome because it was male centric. Now you make it female centric. Now you're just like the rest of these losers. It's a beta factory now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I mean, I was raised into church. I was in school to be a pastor. And I got thrown out. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I know the Bible inside and out. And that's the thing. Guys. Jesus is a hustle, okay? That's tax-free money. Do you understand that? French. That is, that is tax-free, man. The Jesus pill. That's why Roosh sold out. He can probably he's probably collecting no taxes on that now. <laughs> I think uh, metaphysics, woo-woo, uh, magical thinking is all rooted in emotion originally anyways like what we, what we were afraid of in the forest right what's the well it, it's a it's a snake that's going to kill the baby it's a panther that's waiting for me in the dark in the jungle it's it's this this fear of mortality is this instant death kind of thing and over the and this is i'm going to give you a quick history lesson over the course of of evolution let's just say that that thing that's in the forest that you can't see, that fear of the unknown becomes the nature spirit. It becomes the, the, the fertility spirit. It becomes the you know, harvest spirit. It becomes the whatever, the spiritualism kind of thing. And I think that on a sort of on a root level, human beings have that, have, I don't want to call it the, the religion gene, but it's, I think it's strongly tied to emotion. And so when we talk about metaphysics, when we talk about fears, when we talk about hopes, when we talk about those things, um, they're rooted in emotion. And so really what re what religion became, whether it's like, you know, poly uh, polytheism, pantheism, monotheism, all that other stuff, um, it, it, it comes down to one thing is like, how do I feel about, you know, X? What is my what is my greatest concern in my existence today? Well, if I can't explain that, then my emotional state is such because I can't. Well, if I have an explanation for that, then it makes that it makes that emotion not go away, but it makes helps you feel better about it. Like for instance, like the Vikings believed that uh, you know their fate was set, and there was nothing they could do about it. So why worry, right? So maybe worry, maybe concern, maybe preoccupation with other things wasn't conducive to their culture or their society or whatever because you could just die instantly and it was better to live a, a good life a sh if, if albeit short than to you know die of old age or to die on the battlefield or something like that and so as a result because that's what their culture was based about their religion sort of comes in to answers those emotional questions well i can't think about that while well, i'm trying to save my life and my 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 tribe's life and my brother's lives so that's my religion now. Well, we take that and you expand that into patriarch into like Abrahamic religions or even Eastern religions. They're all rooted in one thing, which is emotionalism. And yes, I do agree that where we're at and where we're going with religion right now is going to be a one world religion based on emotion, based on love, based on tolerance, based on all these touchy feely uh, progressive agendas. And we're going to take that, I think, probably within the next decade. And turn that into sort of this globalized, um, you know, gather around the campfire kind of uh, uh, religion of Oprah. You know that that it's an inter everybody get come in here where everybody's welcome. It's the Beyonce feminist worship, uh, you know, service on a Sunday. I think that's where we're going to end up because we have an 
and we have a two generation, maybe three generations that are fed and were born, raised and, and intended to be emotional, to be overly emotional. Well, when they look at old school religion, that seems too dogmatic. It seems too close. It seems to, there's too many rules. I want to feel, and if you go and you look at like some of these surveys that they're doing, even in traditional mainstream religions right now, they ask them, they ask, you know, parishioners, they ask, you know, the congregations, what is it that you want to see more of in the church? Love, tolerance, um, you know, more, f every aspect that, that, w that people would come up with, it's all, it's all aspects that you would expect from very overly emotional people and overly emotional women. So it's always mm -hmm. acceptance, no judgment, uh, tolerance. Uh, you know, those are the adjectives that they were using. And that's where, um, that's where an emotion, a, a, a religion rooted in emotion is going to go in the next day. Indeed. Indeed. So Ryan's had to go cause he's just, uh, he's got, he's gone to church. I think. Yeah, so he had to, he had, he had to, to, he had to, to nip off the street. Um, so Vegas Tans just asked, is there a balance between stoicism and emotionalism or is it strictly binary thing? Yeah, I think there is. I think that's kind of what we were saying early on. You know, you, you can't expect to just be this. You can't expect to cut off all emotions. It's not possible. It's not human. It's not it. healthy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just that you've got to approach life in a more logical manner and do it for, from the, you know, from a mental point of view rather than being led by your emotions but listen uh we need to finish up now because we've been on for about 90 minutes it's been a great stream let's just go around the panel and just see what everyone's got coming up uh in the next week so rich what have you got coming up on your channel and so on over the next oh, few days yeah um i just dropped it here in the chat so i got some work to do today i got a new channel that i just set up i'm going to be uploading clips there from longer format like uh before the train wreck and playing to win so it's there in the YouTube chat. Just click that, join the channel. I've got a bunch of videos I have to upload there. They'll probably start appearing in the next couple of days, but go subscribe. Uh, that's it. That's all I'll cover. So go ahead. Cool. Good stuff. And John, what about yourself? We will be hanging out, no doubt, in uh, Body Language Mastery webinars mm -hmm. again. So for the guys watching in bar uh, Body Language Mastery, shout out to my dude Artemis. I see you in the chat. Um, <laughs> they will be going on for the end uh, until the end of the month. Um, we have the Hot Dude Alliance, which is when all of the previous people who have ever purchased Body Language Mastery, we all come together in one gigantic Zoom community chat, and we talk. We have like mini, mini presentations, some Q&A. It's going to be fantastic. I will be returning to YouTube Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Time to get back on that bike and grind, grind, grind. I'll be doing six days a week again starting Monday. Just took two weeks off and um, been releasing some clips from my video uh, archive. And, um, yeah, so if you want to watch me, go over there. And if you don't like me, go to hell. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Roy. All right, so here's uh, a, a few announcements. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing my show regular time, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I am going to talk about the Will Smith thing, but I'm also going to discuss uh, the differences between like being an alpha and be, still being blue pill or being red pill and still being kind of like a beta. Uh, that, I think that this is a, a good kind of teachable moment right now. Because what happens is when you talk about a guy who's a cel any celebrity, I don't care if it's Will Smith or Jordan Peters, whoever, as soon as you use them as an example, people or, or Prince Harry, right? You, you don't know them. You don't know what they're talking. You don't know who you don't know them personally. OK, well, we're going to talk about the patterns. And we're going to talk about some things, but definitely going to talk about the Will Smith situation and not because it's just timely, but it's also something I think is people can learn from. So that's going to be on tomorrow's show. Um, my other, and I got two other announcements. The other one is I, I, I'm considering, I haven't decided yet. It's not, not this Wednesday, but I'm going to probably move my Wednesday shows to my Patreon community. Uh, I'm, I don't take that decision lightly. I'm doing it and it's not like, Ooh, I can't wait to get lots of money. It's not that it's that I was sort of got the wake up call on Wednesday when I had YouTube decide that they were going to preemptively, 
remove my video that didn't exist. So uh, I'm going to start migrating some stuff over to my Patreon for uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, see how things sort of shake out for the rest of 2020 because this is sort of a very chaotic year to say the least. So that's another decision I made. Um, the other thing is this, is that Rule Zero Live is going to be October 2nd through the 4th. Uh, Vegas is still very much open. Um, I know I, I live here in Reno, Nevada. I am a, a Nevadan, and um, I know that the governor here has decided that he wanted to close down some bars and some other things. And I think, honestly, the population here in Nevada is pretty much fed up with his ass. So I, I don't see any problem with it going forward. Um, I'm still I'm looking for a really good venue at this point. So um, if any any of you guys have suggestions, I'll be happy to take those. Uh, you will start seeing about the the beginning of next week, maybe middle of next week. Like certainly by the 15th of July, I'm going to have collateral out. I'm also working on uh, sort of a promotional video for Rule Zero Live uh, in October. So that is coming. We now have um, nine guys, nine speakers. Uh, at some point, I think I mentioned this to you guys. I really want to get all of us on. Uh, StreamYard feed so we can sort of introduce these guys and have sort of a roundtable discussion kind of thing because now StreamYard supports up to 10 uh, participants on the live stream. So that's really cool. I, I kind of wanted to do that. So uh, look for that uh, in the, if not this week, then certainly next week, certainly this month, we'll be, we'll be doing something like that. And we'll be promoting it a little bit more and the tickets will be available through the new speakers first and then through us. So that's what I got going. Hallelujah. Excellent. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, Thanks everyone for coming on board today. Thanks everyone who tuned in. Please do hit subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed already. Just helps me to continue putting out free content, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what else? Uh, the, the big news is that uh, Charisma and Dating Academy, my online course will reopen on August the 7th. So there'll be some more information coming out about that in due course. But other than that, just hit subscribe to this channel. Follow me on here. Got some, uh, got a podcast coming up on Monday and some more videos next week. And I'm actually on Donovan Sharp shows. Sorry, Donovan Sharp's show later as well. So tune in for that also. Okay, that's it from us. We will see you again very soon. Bye bye.